What's up traders? Welcome back to another Panscript lesson. Today's lesson is going to be covering how to create visual tables to draw onto your trading view charts. But before we begin today's lesson, I just want to make you aware of a interview I did recently with Ivan, the head of market research over at Global Prime. This is Global Prime's YouTube channel right here. Global Prime is an Australian-based A-book broker. Now, don't worry, this isn't a paid promotion or anything like that. I'm just making you aware of, of what the deal is here. Global Prime being an A-book broker means that they do not profit off your losing trades. Most brokers in the retail trading industry operate what's called a B-book. And a B-book is where the majority of their losing traders get placed. And on this B-book, whenever you place a trade, given that the majority of your trades lose, uh, in the case of a losing retail trader, you get placed on the B-book. And what that means is the broker takes the other side of your trade and profits off your losses. Now, we could go into a discussion about the ethics of this and whether it's moral or immoral or how it impacts your trading as a profitable trader. If you're already unprofitable, then it really doesn't affect you that much, to be honest. But if you're a profitable trader or you're in the process of becoming profitable, it can be a huge problem being switched from a B book to an A book. And even if there is no problem with being on the B book, just the fact that the incentives are misaligned between the broker and the client is a big problem. If your broker makes money off you, regardless of whether you're successful, then what incentive do they have to help you succeed? A broker like Global Prime depends on the longevity of their clients, the traders that trade with them. They make their money from commissions, spread markups, and interest markups. It's a little bit complicated, but it doesn't really matter. The core idea here is that a broker like Global Prime prefers profitable traders to be with them because the more active you are, the larger you trade, the more often you trade, the more money they make. That's also true of B-book brokers, except that in their case, they don't care if you're with them next week, next month, because there'll be a new trader to fill your spot. So a B-book broker prefers quantity over quality, whereas an A-book broker prefers quality over quantity out of their clients. And so they are incentivized and motivated to help their clients become better traders, which is why they reached out to me to help educate their clients about TradingView and PineScript. I'm a huge fan of Global Prime and what they do, their ethos, their, their technique, their, their way of doing business. So when Ivan reached out to interview me, I didn't hesitate to say yes. And so the interview went up this morning and you can check it out here if you're interested. You can, I'll leave a link in the video description. But the reason I was interviewed by uh, Global Prime is because they recently became fully integrated with the TradingView platform. If you're a fan of my channel, then you know how much of a fan I am of TradingView. And so it's great to see a reputable, low-cost broker come onto TradingView and allow traders to trade through their platform directly on TradingView, utilizing the power of PineScript and the power of the TradingView platform. Now, as I mentioned, the A book, B book thing, I'll go into all of that in a future lesson. I'm still learning a lot of it myself, to be honest. This is something that I haven't done um, as much research as I should have done being a trader. I should know more about this information than I do. But I'm in the process of educating myself on the way brokers work, how they make money, what their incentives are when it comes to client relationships. And if you're interested in learning more about that, head over to their YouTube channel here and check out their playlist on how Forex brokers make money. This playlist right here is phenomenal for any traders who are curious about how the retail trading industry works behind the scenes. Anyway, that's it. I don't want to hold you back any longer. Let's get into today's lesson. Now, this is a feature or functionality that was added to PineScript relatively recently. And it's something I've been implementing into my the, the scripts that I use regularly, particularly scripts that I use to trade, such as this script you see here, which is my ultimate pullback indicator. You can see up here that I have a bunch of trade statistics drawing. I've got how many trades the script has taken, the average risk reward, wins, losses, long wins, short win percentage, break-even rate, um, break-even quantity, break-even rate percentage-wise, our max adverse excursion and max favorable excursion, the average, this is the how far price goes on average towards our stop loss before going on to hit our take profit, or how far it goes towards our take profit before coming up and stopping us out. Then we have a win rate and a danger zone, 
This danger zone is basically our break-even zone for this script because we're using a one-to-one -one risk reward at the moment. Our danger zone is 50%. So if we win 50% or less of the time, we're going to be losing money. And then down here, we have a bit of a um, custom-built backtesting system that I can put in my starting capital and it will calculate my ending capital, my return, both in dollar amount and pips and in percentage amount and my max drawdown percentage. Now in today's lesson, I'm not going to be covering how to build this out because quite frankly, it would take uh, it would take quite a while to build something like this. We're talking over an hour um, of coding potentially. And I cover a lot of this more advanced, um, these more advanced concepts and techniques in the indicators and strategies course. If you uh, want to fast track your learning of this stuff and add this kind of functionality to your own scripts. But in today's lesson, I'm just going to be showing you how to draw a table onto your chart. And then you can populate that table or the, the um, cells of that table with whatever data you want. So to start with, I'm going to hide the script and create a new blank script. All I've done is set overlay to true. Let's add the script to our chart and get started. So drawing tables onto your chart is, um, it's not, as, not too difficult, but there, is, there are a few things we need to do in order to get it to work. There's a few steps involved and I'll walk you through them now. Uh, below the video, there'll be a link to the TradingView blog post that announced the release of this feature. And in that post, they include a number of examples on how to use tables. I can't cover every uh, minor detail of tables because there is quite a lot we can do with them. Um, today, I'm just showing you a practical way to draw a basic table onto your chart so that you can visually display information. If you want to get really fancy with your tables, um, that's something that you can learn to do by checking out the examples over on that blog post or just reading through the documentation on the TradingView reference manual, uh, the PineScript reference manual. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do in order to display information to a table is create our table. So to do that, we use the VAR operator. These are persistent variables. Hopefully you've learned about these by now if you're watching this lesson. Uh, this just means that our table will not be um, recreated on every new bar. We create the table once and then we can update it whenever we want to. So this is going to be a table variable. So VAR space table space. And then this is the name of the variable or the table ID. So for this, I'm just going to say uh, my table and my table is going to be set to table dot new. And then this inbuilt function will create a new table for us. It takes a bunch of parameters. The first one is the position. So you can put your table in the, I think the top right, bottom right, bottom left, uh, maybe top left. I'm not sure. That's where the indicators tend to go. So I'm not sure if you can put it in the top left, but you can put it in the middle, uh, top middle, bottom middle, and um, sort of the center of your chart. If you type in here, um, position dot control space. Here is a list of all the locations we can place our table and we can place it in the top left, which is interesting. Um, anyway, the probably the best place for it would be the top right or bottom right for the most part for most scripts. So for today's lesson, we're going to stick with top right. Um, you could also create this as a user setting and the user could select where to place the uh, table, but we'll keep it simple today and we'll just hard code our table to be placed in the top right of our screen. The next thing we need to specify is how many columns and rows we want in our table. So for today's lesson, I'm going to go with, uh, let's go with five columns and two rows. So that'll look something like this. One, two, three, four, five columns, and then two rows. So our table will look something like this, kind of like what my ultimate pullback indicator look like at the start. And then we can fill the cells with whatever we want. Um, we'll get to that in a moment. So we've got five columns, five rows. There are a bunch of other parameters here we could select uh, or work with. I'm not gonna to touch any of them because we don't need to today. All I'm going to do is set the border width, border underscore width to one pixel. So in between our cells will be a one pixel gap or one, whatever this is, one unit gap. So that's it. If I save the script, that should compile fine. There we go. So the next thing we need to do is update our table data. 
Now the best practice for this is to do this on the very last bar of your chart. So for this, I check if bar state dot is last. So this is the very last bar on our chart. Then we update our table. And to do that, we use the table dot cell function. And this will update the cell of the given table at the given column and the given row. So for this, we would pass my table. And for the very first uh, cell, we want to pass in the zero column and the zero row. And then we need to pass in some text. So I'm just going to create a new variable here called text one. And that's just going to be set to some text uh, to begin with. Then we can specify the width and height if we want to. If you don't specify the width and height, then that will be calculated automatically. So I recommend leaving them blank uh, for the most part, unless you're doing some advanced formatting of your table. And then next up, we have our background color and our text color. So you could set this to whatever you want to. I'm going to set mine to color.black and my text color to color.white. And then we need to uh, set our text uh, parameter. So for this, I'm going to set text equals txt1 comma. And now this should, if I save the script, uh, create a table in the top right with some text. And this text could be anything. So we could say uh, closing price uh, backslash new line. And then we could add to string the current bars close, save the script. And there we go. So this is a really handy way to display information onto the chart that you need either for your trading or for debugging your scripts it can also be useful for that. So let's create a few more here. Let's do text two equals, and then we'll say opening price to string open. Uh, text three could be uh, pip gain slash loss backslash new line uh, to string. And then we could say uh, open minus, or let's go close minus open. And then let's copy this table.cell function a couple of times. And now we need to change our row and column uh, values in order to set which cell to update. So for our second value here, let's change all our text to text two, text three. Let's set the row to one. And then on the third one, I will set our column to one. Now, if I save the script, you can see that we have some more information here. So notice that uh, we have a blank cell here. The reason for that is that this is our zero column. So as we add columns to this table, they shift to the left. So, so if we've got five columns here and we add in all five text values to these cells, this column will be five cells to the left. So that's important to note when building out your tables. Uh, let's add a bunch of other information here in text four. Let's set to EMA uh, 50 EMA value is plus two string. We just say EMA close 50 text five. Let's set that to RSI value backslash n two string RSI uh, close. Uh, close 14 and let's copy this table.cell function a couple more times. Um, and so we need to flip our row numbers and column numbers, um, increment them by one basically for each cell. So we've got 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 2, 0, 2, 1. And let's change all of our text values to the appropriate one. Let's create a Text six, let's create another text six. This can be the percent change uh, plus two string. And then we can say here, change close divided by previous close times 100. And then I need to wrap that in parentheses, close that off and that should work. Let's save the script uh, and we get a few errors here. Uh, because we're using this under an if statement, if bar state dot is last, um, these inbuilt functions are not generating their value until the very last bar. We need to extract these from the scope. So let's put these up here. EMA equals EMA close, uh, RSI 
equals RSI close and then change. We need to say market change, market change, and paste all that in there. Now this should compile without any warnings or errors and we should be getting our values up here. Perfect. Uh, now the decimal values are a bit long, but um, uh, actually while we're here, this isn't really in the scope of the lesson, but I will show you how to truncate or, or cut the decimal values back to however many decimal values you want, as this is going to be a common problem you run into when displaying indicator values uh, in text the way we are here. So I'm just going to quickly add on a script that I was working on recently that I know has this inbuilt uh, custom function that I wrote. If I scroll down here to this truncate function and copy that out, get rid of the script, open up our table script, and I'll paste this at the very top of our script. Uh, this is a custom function that truncates or cuts the excess decimal places uh, of the number we pass it. So we use this function like this. I would say uh, truncate EMA to two decimal places. And if I paste that in to all of these, um, two. Now when I save the script, all of these numbers will be cut down to two decimal places. There we go. We don't want to cut our price or our pip gain or loss down, uh, just these indicator values. And we should probably add a percentage sign on the end of this percent change. And I think that'll do. I mean, you could add, we did create a table with five columns, so we could add two more uh, columns here if we wanted to, but I'll leave it there. You get the idea, I'm sure. Um, just make sure that you have enough columns in the table you created. Uh, if we were to set this down to two and save the script, we'll get an error um, up here. You can see that we have an error because column two is out of the table bounds. So um, as far as I know, there's nothing wrong with having too many columns in your table, uh, but having too few is a problem. So just make sure that you have enough columns and rows in your table to be able to fill all the cells that you do in your script. So let me save that. And we're pretty much done. Um, just really quickly, one last thing I'll show you to do, just because you might find it interesting, is how to change the background color and text based on, um, for example, let's change the percent change background color to be green or red based on whether this is a negative value. So percent change is here. Uh, market change text six. So down here, we'll change the background color to a conditional statement. And we'll say, is market change uh, greater than zero? If so, set the background color to green. Otherwise, set it to red. And uh, we can leave the text color as white. That should be fine. Let's save the script. And there we go. Now the value is red. If we go to a market that had a positive change, uh, were there any on a Friday? Uh, surely one market, here we go. Uh, there we go, green percent change. So that'll do, obviously you can change the location. Let's change it to top left just to see what that looks like. Um, it'll probably look pretty bad because it'll be yeah, covered by the ticker and everything. I don't think you'd ever wanna set it there, but you could do bottom right um, or bottom left. And for example, if you wanna keep it out of the way of price action, maybe you wanna set it to bottom underscore left. Save that. And now it's down here, which is not a bad spot for it. It keeps it out of the way of current price action. So that'll do it for today. Obviously you can change the text color as well if you want to. And there are a bunch of other parameters you can play around with here if you want to. Um, and as always, just hold down control and click on these if you wanna read up on uh, what each parameter is capable of doing. Anyway, that'll do it for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this lesson valuable and interesting in your own coding. Take care, best of luck with your trading, and I will see you in the next lesson. Goodbye.